stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is The Haunting Hour. Ptolemy's Grave. Over the tomb which held the mummy of Ptolemy the Third, these words were written. Death to him who disturbs the everlasting resting place of these sacred remains. Two weeks ago, William Cartwright, a famous Egyptologist, defied this curse. He bought the mummy, had it sent to his home. That same day, he slowly walked down the stairs from his upstairs study. His wife, Martha, heard his familiar footsteps in the hall over the stairs, but she did not know that her husband was then walking into a nothingness, that he would completely disappear, leaving no trace of his whereabouts. Now, it is two o'clock the following morning. The Cartwright house is still. A taut feeling of mystery hovers in the air. Martha Cartwright is dreaming of her missing husband. And in her dream, as in her waking hours, she is haunted by the fear of Ptolemy's curse. William? William? Martha, I hear you. Do you hear me? William, where are you? Downstairs. I'm downstairs, Martha. Downstairs? Here in our house? In our study. Come to the study, Martha. I'll come. I'll come, William. Here in the study, Martha. Come to the study. Yes, William. The study. I'm here, William. Here at the study door. Look for me. Where are you, William? Look for me, Martha. Darkness. Can't see you. Come over the carpet to the mummy case. To the mummy case. The mummy of Ptolemy III. Yes. Yes, William, I'm here. Look at the mummy closely, Martha. I am looking, William. Don't you see? All I see is a strange, misty light. Like a halo. Shining, glowing about the mummy. Lean forward then, Martha. Look closely. Uh. Look closer. No, I can't. I can't. You must, Martha. Look at the mummy's face. The face? Can't you see, Martha? Can't you see what it is? No. No, it's just... I don't know what you mean. The features, Martha. Don't you see anything different about the features? Gray, shrunken, shriveled skin. Gray and horrible. But the lips, the forehead, the eyes. Don't you see, Martha? Have you forgotten so soon? Forgotten? I'll remember you, William. I'll always remember you. But if the eyes were open, if they were open, Martha, could you? Look, now they are open, Martha. Yeah. I see. Now I see. William, the mummy has your face. Yes, Martha, that's it. The mummy and I, we're the same, Martha. The same. The same? William! <laughs> Dr. John Crandall. This is he. Oh. Who's this, Martha? Yes, John. Look, I had to call you. I'm so afraid. I thought the operator could never get my call through. Yes, I know. The long-distance lines are pretty well tied up. What's the matter, Martha? What time is it? It's very late, but I couldn't wait till morning. 
John, something's happened. Have they found William? Yes. I, I mean, no, I, I don't know. Look, John, I need you badly. I think I'm going out of my mind. Oh, nonsense. What happened? I've got to see you, John, please, tonight. I'm asking you this not only as a patient, but as a friend. But I can't come into town tonight, Martha. Oh, you're all right. It's just your imagination. Oh, no, I thought it was a dream. Well, I've got a job here that's got to be finished, but I can leave the hospital early in the morning. Come as soon as you can, please. I promise, Martha. Now, take hold of yourself. Control is the word. Remember. I'll try, John. I'll try. <laughs> Mr. Crow. Yes? Uh, this is Martha Cartwright, Mr. Crow. I'm sorry to wake you up if I did. Oh, no, no, no. That is all right. I've got to see you first thing in the morning. It's important. It's urgent. Why, of course, Mrs. Cartwright. Will you come here to my house at nine o'clock? At nine. I will be there. But what is the trouble? It's about that mummy you sold my husband. Oh, I, I see. Don't fail me, Mr. Crow. Oh, no, no. I will be there without fail. <laughs> Mrs. Cartwright? You're Mr. Kroll. Yes. Come in, please. Thank you. You're the gentleman who sold my husband the mummy, aren't you? Yes. Well, I want you to take it away. Take it away? Yes, immediately. You're here right away. But, Mrs. Cartwright... I'm sorry. Uh... I'm terribly upset. No, I understand. How soon can you take it away? Perhaps tomorrow morning. Oh. But... What do you want me to do with it? I don't know. I don't care. Sell it or give it away. Do anything you want with it. Well, that would be very difficult. You see, one reason your husband was able to buy it was... Well, <laughs> perhaps we'd better not discuss it right now. You mean it's cursed? Yes. Misfortune has always been attached to it. Do you believe in this curse? I have specialized in the art and civilization of the pharaohs for 20 years. My experience has taught me to respect their ideas. Yes, Mrs. Cartwright. I believe in the curse. Can you tell me what the curse says? Death to him who disturbs the sacred remains. A death of torture, of maddening pain. Death in its strangest form. And now, now that my husband is dead, I may be the next victim? Hmm. You must take it back. Please, Mr. Crowell, I can't have it here another night. I haven't slept for days. I can't keep my eyes open, but I'm afraid to sleep. Why don't you leave this house until tomorrow? I can't. I'm expecting my doctors. Then perhaps you will be able to take a nap before he arrives. Perhaps. Well, thank you, Mr. Crowell. You'll take it tomorrow, then. Yes. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Cartwright. <laughs> William. Death in its strangest form. Not you, William. A death of torture, of maddening pain. They couldn't, William, they couldn't. Martha, do you hear me? William. Yes, Martha. Where are you? I'm in the study, Martha. You remember where you saw me last night? No. no it was a dream last night. You were in the mummy case, then it couldn't be. Yes, I'm still there, Martha. Come and you'll see. No, William, I couldn't go there again, no. But I haven't disappeared. I'm here in the house. You want to be with me? I'm here in the study, Martha. I can't come to you. I'm afraid. Afraid of me, your husband? Yes, William, I know. I'll come to you. Down here, Martha, in the study. I'm coming to you, William. I'll do anything you say. But don't make me look at the face. You must, Martha. No, William, I'll do anything. Not that, please. No, not that. No. Martha. Please don't make me. Well, please, I can't do it. Martha, uh, wake up. It's John. No. John Crandall. I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die. I don't want to look at that face again. Please don't make me. William, please, please. Oh, Martha. John Crandall. You were walking in your sleep, Martha. I'm, I'm sorry I slapped you, but... I had to wake you. Oh, you're here, John. Thank 
thank heaven you're here. <laughs> Is there anything left that you haven't told me, Martha? That's all I know, John. I'm not going crazy, am I? No, Martha. As a psychiatrist, I can tell you that you're not going crazy. This is all the result of the shock of Will's disappearance. But that doesn't explain the curse, John. What oh, about... Oh, nonsense. Civilized people don't believe in curses. Those statements were inscribed on tombs to frighten away grave robbers. So hard for me to believe that now. Martha, I want you to make an experiment with me. What? Let's go into the study together and look at the mummy. Oh, no, 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 but I you've can't. got to. It's the only way you can overcome your fear. Now, just let me prove that it's only your imagination and nothing oh, more. Please, if no. If you want me to help you, Martha, you have to help me, too. Come. All right. That's it. Here's the study. Where's the light switch? John, wait. Don't turn on the light. But, Martha, but I... there, John, you see it? You see that misty light? It's just the moon coming through the blinds. No, no, it's the mummy. Look at it. The mummy. You see it? That gray light that shines around it? I'm not sleeping, John. I'm here with you. And look at that face. Look closely, John. I am, Martha. You see that face? William's face? As though it were dead for centuries? Is this a nightmare, too? No, no, it's not a nightmare. I see it. And that mummy is William's body. It's the curse of Ptolemy the Third. But you laughed at John. You laughed. Martha. Now William's gone. He's dead. Martha, please. And I'll be cursed after John was. You don't believe me. I do, I do. Why didn't he believe it when they told him? Now it's too late, don't you see? Now I'll die as William died. Because now the mummy belongs to me. <laughs> Dr. Cartwright, a famous Egyptologist, purchased a mummy called Ptolemy III, despite the fact that it was known to be cursed. The same day, he vanished. Now his wife has been suffering from the delusion that the mummy has acquired Cartwright's features. In fact, is Cartwright. Dr. Crandall, a psychoanalyst and a friend of the Cartwrights, has tried to disprove this only to find that he, too, notices a strange resemblance. Now, we find Dr. Crandall attending Mrs. Cartwright in a hospital. It's daylight, isn't it? Yes. How do you feel? Better. What happened to me? Well, you were suffering from lack of sleep, Martha, and your nerves were so unstrung that I thought it best to bring you here for a while. Do you believe in the curse now, John? After what you saw? No. But you saw the same thing I did? Yes. How do you explain it? I'm not sure that I can explain it yet, Martha. But after I brought you here, I went back to the house again to look at the mummy. And? It was gone. Go? Oh, I suppose Mr. Kroll called for it. Who is Mr. Kroll? He's the man through whom William bought the mummy. I asked him to take it away. I see. Well, I'm going to leave you now, Martha. There are several things I want to take care of. But I'll be back this evening, and I want you to come with me to Mr. Kroll's place. Why? I want to see that mummy again. Oh, but, John, why must I do that? Are you still afraid of the curse? Yes. Well, I still intend to prove to you that there is no such thing. I'm going to buy that mummy. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Kroll. Oh, Mrs. Cartwright. And... Uh, this is Dr. John Crandall. Oh, good evening. How do you do, sir? Mrs. Cartwright brought me here so that I could see the mummy of Ptolemy III. Of course. Of course. May I ask why you wish to see it? I'm interested in buying it. I've tried to convince him that it's cursed, Mr. Crow, but he doesn't want to believe it. Mm, many men have refused to believe it. It is only fair that we inform those we intend to buy. And the rest is entirely up to them. Now, if you step this way, please. The mummy is in my workshop. Thank you. <clears throat> mm, I notice you have many other mummies here, don't you, Mr. Crow? Oh, yes. I am known as an expert in repairing them. They are sent from museums and collectors all over the world. Mm. And which is Ptolemy the Third? In the sarcophagus, right here. Will you open it? Why, of course, certainly. <laughs> 
Now, just a moment, Martha. Don't go away. I want you to look at it. John! It's very important. There. Uh, there you are, sir. There it is. Martha, is that the mummy we looked at last night? You see, I'm not sure. I saw it for only a few minutes. It looks the same, but... But what? The faces. I mean, the features are not so familiar. How do you mean? This one doesn't look like William. Perhaps the light is too sharp here. Uh, do you think you could turn the lights off for a second, Mr. Kroll? No, 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 Mr. Kroll. No, I'm afraid. Martha, you know I'm not trying to hurt you any more than you've already been hurt by this whole affair. But I must get you to believe that there is no such thing as a curse of this kind. But, uh, if you don't do as I say, your condition may grow even worse. Beyond my control. Is that clear? Yes. Now, Mr. Kroll, will you turn off the light? Of course. Are you looking at the mummy in that sarcophagus, Martha? Yes. Do you see anything now? No. It's so pitch black I can't see anything at all. Nothing. I see. John, you know I haven't been imagining all this. You... <gasps> what is it, Martha? Over there. Look near that other wall. Face. That's Williams, just as we saw it last night, John. With that glow all around it. And, it, and it's moving. Look, it's moving. John, make him turn on the light. John! Mr. Crow, will you turn on the light? Please, hurry. Why, certainly. Oh. Uh. Oh, John. All right, Martha, all right. We'll get you out of here. Will you open the door, Mr. Cole? Why, of course, Doctor. And uh, could I ask you to get Mrs. Cartwright a glass of water? A pleasure, I'm sure. Martha, Martha, listen to me carefully. Mm. I've got to explain quickly. As soon as you leave here, go straight to the nearest telephone and call the police. Tell them to come here immediately. I don't understand. I know now that William was murdered. What? Yes, Cole killed him, and I'm going to stay here with him until the police arrive. I beg your pardon, I, I have the water. Thank you, thank you. Now, drink this, Martha, and take the pill I just gave you. Yes. That's it. Now I think you'd better go home, and uh, don't forget what I told you. Yes, John, I'll go home. Goodbye, Mr. Crowe. Goodbye, madame. Oh, it's terrible, sir. She's completely obsessed with the fear of that mummy, and it's destroying her. She loved her husband very much, I'm sure. Of course, of course. But more than anything else, it's her insane fear of that curse. And is that the reason you want to purchase the mummy, Dr. Crandall? Precisely. In that case, maybe I can help you. You can? Yes, let us talk about it. Uh, but first, would you like to have a drink? I noticed you are rather fatigued after what just has happened. Yes, I guess I could stand something. Uh, will you join me? <laughs> Why should I leave myself out? <laughs> Why, of course, I, I have some very fine old spirits here. <laughs> and now, <laughs> there we are. Uh, I hope... What was that? What? Is there somebody else in your workroom? I... I thought I heard a noise from there. Well, there is nobody there that I know of. No, no. It must be your imagination, Doctor. Oh. Perhaps you yourself can take one of those pills you just administered to Mrs. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, she, she has been a very trying patient, I'll admit. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> to her early recovery. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> hey, dear, there is nothing quite like it, is there, eh, Doctor? Yes, it's, it's very fine, I must say. Now, I don't like to hurry you, Mr. Cole, but I'm very much interested in your idea to help Mrs. Cartwright. Well, let us start at the beginning. When you first came into the shop with Mrs. Cartwright and she looked at the mummy, she did not see anything about it that frightened her. Is that right? Right. But when you suggested that we turn off the lights, it was then, for the first time, that she was aware of her, well, shall we say, her hallucination. And uh, what do you suggest? I suggest that she have the mummy return to her house and then have her practice looking at it while the lights are on. And in this way, she might forget the hallucinations of seeing her husband's face. But suppose she is not suffering from hallucinations, oh, Mr. Crow. Well, you yourself saw what a change came over her when the lights were turned off. But she was not frightened by the mummy you originally showed her. No? No, Mr. Crow. Mrs. Cartwright saw the mummy you didn't want her to see. The mummy that you took from her house. The mummy that happens to be no mummy at all, but is, in fact, the body of her husband. You know that? That was why you hung a curtain in front of that mummy before we arrived. And how did you know it was behind the curtain in my workroom? Because of the glow of light around it. 
I could see that glow when the lights were turned off, so I took the curtain away completely. That was what made Mrs. Cartwright think it was moving. Oh, I see. You are a very astute doctor. Could you tell me, perhaps, what you think made the misty glow? That's simple. It was the natural body gases and fluids which you forgot to extract before you applied your preservative to Dr. Cartwright's corpse when you mummy. You are quite right. That was the only mistake I made. There are certain things that you can't hide, Kroll, such as your bleached hair and beard. Your real name is Cavarella, isn't it? Oh, so you are not only a doctor, you are a detective as well. Well, you see, I knew that William Cartwright was one of the foremost Egyptologists in this country. And as such, he was often called upon to testify as an expert witness in many fraudulent cases connected with the culture. Uh, so? Yes. So I went through those cases with the district attorney on the assumption that one of those defendants was connected in some way with Cartwright's disappearance. And the district attorney told you about me. I found out that you'd been convicted in one of those and sent to prison for 12 years on the basis of Cartwright's testimony. Oh, well, we all make mistakes, Dr. Crandall. Even you. What do you mean? That drink you just had. It was poisoned. And in a few more minutes, perhaps, you will be dead. But I promise you one thing... I will not make the same mistake on your corpse that I did on Cartwright. So, you... You... Oh, my throat! <laughs> you are beginning to feel the effect of the poison. You can't get away with this. I, I'll come back after I'm dead. I am not the superstitious one, Doctor. I, I can't breathe. My, my throat! <laughs> dead. And now, before Mrs. Cartwright can return with the police, as you have instructed her, I... Mrs. Cartwright. Yes, I want to talk to Dr. Crandall. He said... You killed him. Yes. And I am very glad you have returned. What are you going to do? Well, you see, I was just about to change Dr. Crandall's features completely so that I would not have a repetition of the same trouble. Although I did not want to kill him, I guess I was a little hasty. It was you I should have killed, my dear Mrs. Cartwright. Patrick? So you went out to call the police, eh? But they will never find out. Not with my way. You'll find out. You can't do this. You can't get away with it. To the police, it will be just another disappearance. A disappearance caused by the curse of Ptolemy. People like to believe those things, Mrs. Cartwright. No! No! You can't do it, Cole. For you, Dr. You didn't believe me, Cole. I told you I'd come back. John! It's not true. It can't be. I you feel the pain, Cole. The pain in your throat. I feel it much more. Yes, I do. What is it? In your chest, and now it's around your heart. Oh, no, no. Yes, it is. Come into my heart. I, I can't breathe. Oh, you're choking me. Choking me. He's dead. John, you're alive. I don't understand. I know how trying this is for you, Martha, but listen to me. I'll explain but it. But I just... Saw... I wasn't dead. Kroll offered me a poison drink, but I distracted his attention by pretending to hear something outside. Oh. When he went to look, I switched the drinks, and he was the one who got the poison. When I saw you there, I thought the mummy's curse had worked again. No, Martha. That curse we talked about so much was only Kroll's own invention, and it came back to him. If he'd never thought it up, he would never have died as a result of it. <laughs> Shadows and stillness, mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubts and fears. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory. In the haunting hour. 